Well, that's that's okay too. If, uh, if the group's a stopping point, I'll just see you uh, work through the problems. What are we working on here? Well, we just we're kind of figuring out that last one. The, uh, number thirty. Yeah, number thirty, which is here. Okay, that's the fluid power diagram for the Bettis pipeline valve. Okay. Uh, one of our main deals was first making sure we got the legend correct because yeah. we've got dotted lines here that don't mean electrical like we're used to. <laughs> they mean um, back to our return to our tank, reserve yes. return. So they've actually made their own legend, their own custom set of line symbols, line types. This is process right here, I assume? What's that? The this line right here? Is this that's just a box. Yep. Oh, right. That's Building. just a box. Oh, yeah. I didn't really follow it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, follow it around, see where it goes. So, yeah, as we're pumping this up, we're pumping pressure or hydraulic out of the tank. Uh -huh. We've got our relief valve here, which is one of the questions. We were trying to figure out how we okay. got our relief. That's a symbol for our relief valve. Okay. Um, a gauge here. Pumps up pressure to the actuator here. Uh -huh. if, if there's too much pressure, this is our high, I believe what it says, 10. Uh -huh. Yeah. Relief valve, high pressure. Okay, so if we get cool. too much high pressure, that'll relieve there. Why is it important to have that in the system? It's a high pressure Build. relief unit for us. Glenn, um, bas yeah, yeah, basically, um, if some smart person pumped it way too much, it didn't mess up the whole entire system. They just relieved the pressure. Okay, all right. So you can't overpressure it by pumping too much. Correct. Let's figure out how and why that works from the symbol. Take a look at that symbol. Can we tell how and why that works as a high pressure relief? So you symbol actually oh. makes sense. Go ahead, Glenn. Uh, so you increase pressure on that little line, and I'm assuming that that moves the actual air over, which makes it allow uh, the process flow through, basically. Okay, so as the pressure builds up here, you're saying the valve's going to open and vent it out back to the reservoir. Correct. So it's maintaining a, a maximum pressure there. It can't go over a certain set limit. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Okay. When it does go over that certain level, that's when it actually it's based when it on pressure and bleeds pressure out. Yeah. So it's pre pressure actuated mm -hmm. at a certain pressure. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Now I understand how a high pressure could push this to the left. Yeah. How does a low pressure kick this to the left? or to the right, depending on where you're standing. Well, it's a relief valve low pressure. Right. So yeah, it's a good question, because it seems to be the same design of valve as that. So why would they call this a high pressure and call that one a low pressure? It's yeah. yeah. a low pressure line. That's a high pressure line. So, so it's, it's not still a high pressure for oh. that line. It's just lower than this one. It's still a high pressure limit, but it's operating on the lower pressure line. Oh, oh yeah, okay. right. Okay. So the, the word, or the symbol low pressure doesn't mean it's function. It gotcha. just means it's position in the system. Okay, that makes sense. This regulator, on the other hand, is a bit different. Number 12. That is your pressure regulator. Notice how that's set up a little bit different. The sensing line is on the downstream side instead of the upstream side. How does that work? Now, is that adjustable? <coughs> Am I seeing the error right or no? It is yeah, variable. Yeah. It yeah, is it's variable. variable. Okay. Also. But just uh, the, the, the feature of where the line comes from, the sensing line, what does that tell you versus these, where the sensing line is on the upstream side? Sensing side. Output back output pressure and okay. sensing its output pressure. Uh, now that's normally open. Right. Normally passing. So when there's no pressure, it <laughs> shuts. Passes. Okay, right. right okay. And when there's pressure, what does that do? Opens. Uh, wait, can you say that again? I'll let you figure it out. Go ahead and uh, together and reason out what that symbol means. I want to hear the deliberation. We want this at, at rest, it is passing. Okay. And if this is pushed with high pressure, this is also pushed with high pressure back to the reservoir. It's, it's on the low pressure side, so with low pressure, that's keeping this at rest, which means it's passing. Uh -huh. If this builds up high pressure, on more on this side, it's going to push this to a shut state, yeah. mm -hmm. and it's very to do it. And it probably would open this. Right? It's a separate valve, but just looking at this, it, trying to figure out the function of it, you're exactly right. That's yeah. how it's going to work. <clears throat> so in two, two accounts, we, we have a series regulator that doesn't let us build up beyond a certain point. We've got a shunt regulator that also doesn't let us build up beyond a certain point. So we're really double protected. We can't get too much pressure there. What is an accumulator? Ah, that is a vessel. Got an idea, Nick? Water in the line? I would think like an indicator. Turns out it's a vessel that's partially filled with oil, partially with air. Provides an air cushion. 
Oh. Uh, uh, because we know that liquids are incompressible. So the accumulator provides a compressible vapor space or air space that can absorb any pressure surges. Some people put accumulators on their home water systems to get rid of water hammer. Like when you shut a valve real quick and you hear the hammering sound in an old house. You can get rid of that by putting an accumulator in the system. It provides an air bubble, provides some cushioning in the hydraulic system. Is there oil in there to, to spray minute bits of oil to the instrumentation to keep them running? No, no, this is the oil. The oh, oil is oh, in the pipe. Oh, I understand. The oil is the fluid. We're not talking water here. It's yeah, oil. Got it. So it's got a gas bubble above oil to provide some Yeah, it's not pneumatic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Go ahead, Glenn. So you have this on the lower. How come it's on the higher too? Another one on the higher. I, I don't know. Looking at that originally, I said that you'd also want one there. Uh, apparently, the the function is fulfilled readily by the the high pressure bypass. I I couldn't say why they got one there instead of there. I suppose it wouldn't hurt to have one on the high side, other than the fact that actually, oh, here's your answer. A valve right there acts as one. Oh, as you pump fluid in here, what's that do? Uh, it compresses so, yeah. the spring. So that mechanically fulfills the same function as that does pneumatically. Wow, that's cool. Okay, so where do we go next? We figure out what all this stuff does. So now we're down to this part. How does this part work? Hmm. Jump in. We got our pilot. The three ones we're dealing with here is we got a, a manual auto, a pilot, and then a, uh, what was 20 again? Those are still like Normally closed. So uh, this is just kind of directing, correct? Closed, at rest. And then this is controlled by these items. Wait, say that again? Just trying to follow. This yeah. is controlled by down here. And this is sensing pressure from our. Uh, that's your pipeline. Pipeline. Mm -hmm. So that'll, as pressure builds up, that'll either open this. Seems like the top one and the bottom are the same thing. Uh -huh. So it's trying to land right there in the middle. Exactly. And when it lands right there in the middle, what's it do to this LP line? Let's it block it or let it pass? Let's it pass. Let's it pass. Okay. It's in the middle. Okay, and what does this one do? And and that is controlled by a uh, solenoid. Right. Right. When it's energized? Oh, sorry. Well, yeah, it's a pass. When it's energized, it passes. Okay, when that's in the auto mode, that passes as well. Goes to there, what does that do? That's a good question. That's your reset. Oh. oh. It's a reset valve. It's called a reset valve, exactly. Looking at his picture, once we get pressure here, what does it do? It moves it over. It looks like it, it shifts. And does what when it shifts? It shifts blocks, 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 the blocks the flow. Okay. So when I lose pressure here, what does that valve do? It returns to its natural state, where Which it allows is? flow to return back to the tank. Ah. And bleeds all the pressure away. Right. Okay. So how? why both? It seems like those kind of are serving a similar purpose. They both bleed oil back to the reservoir. Based on pressure, but different spots in pressure. Uh huh. This is always sensing the LP line pressure. This only senses the pressure that comes through these. So now it's time to piece together how, the, how do these work okay. with that to control that valve. We're almost there. <laughs> you can do this. So we want everything else closed in order for this deal to... Let me ask you this question. Close. To get stuff through our pipeline, what does that valve have to be? Open, open. or shut? To keep it open, what pressure do we have to have here? Do we have to have pressure or no pressure? No, 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 pressure. no pressure. Think so? I can't see. Pulling it open, right? High pressure. Oh, push two, down two. And it opens the valve. That's a solidly colored valve. Okay. You see this symbology sometimes in diagrams. A solidly filled in colored valve means a normally shut. Okay. Normally closed. Oh, okay. So that takes pressure there to open it. Open. Okay. Okay. So I have to maintain pressure here to keep the valve open and let stuff go through the pipeline. Okay. okay. So that means all this, the job of all this is to maintain pressure here to keep the pipeline valve open. Pressure. Okay, go from there. Reason from there. Yeah, maintain pressure to this 
point mm -hmm. right here. And then specifically relating to what we saw happen here. 23, what's it do? You'd want this to be in the shut state. Why? So your pressure isn't all going back into the tank. So if that valve is venting, we'll lose pressure here, we'll lose pressure here, pipeline shuts off. Correct. Mm -hmm. So we keep this in the shut state, and to which do means that, we got pressure here. And to do that... Means we have our automatic on, uh -huh. <laughs> which means we want this to be energized, uh -huh. and we want this to be somewhere in the middle. Not too high, not too low. And right. the process is going to dictate that right. by coming up through that valve into our pilot, and it's going to keep within that so middle region. If it gets region. too high, it'll pu it'll push that bottom box all the way up. Uh -huh. If it's too low, you can push it all the way down. So is there a flow sensor in there? It's back here, and, this and then that just regulates the, the pressure. pressure so if anything on. happens to get the pressure out of bounds here, I bleed that off. That opens up, bleeds pressure, that bleeds that, pipeline shuts off. Mm -hmm. So, Jeff, you asked a question, is there a flow sensor? Well, uh, for this one right here, it's got to be somewhere in the middle, not too high, not too low. And what actuates it? What's that, that, that was my question. Okay. Hey, hey, it looks like it's flow. Too high or too low What do you flow. think? Pressure. I don't know. In the pipe, right here. Oh, I guess it's so. operational. If you look right here, where it goes into the bottom of the pilot, translate that to the line over here in our legend, that tells me that that's a process controlled okay. pilot. So my oil, gas, whatever's through the pipeline is going right to that thing. Mm -hmm. And it's pushing off. Okay, I get it. Yeah. And these are all open or closed by hand. Yes. Mm -hmm. So would you say it's actually by pressure or flow? Pressure. pressure. Yeah. Absolutely. If the pipeline pressure gets too high, shuts off. Pipeline pressure gets too low, shuts off. Bounces. Okay. That pipeline pressure is just right, stays in the middle, it's happy. Mm -hmm. Simple, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on here, yeah. but I, I hope we're seeing how we piece this together. This is all about problem solving. It's all about identifying functions, piecing together logically what must happen. And it can be done. It can be a long-winded process, but you're piecing together logically how this thing must work because this is the only explanation you've got on it, and it's very brief. They just kind of throw it at you and say, okay, figure out the symbols. It may take you a while, but you figure it out. It can be done. The black valve. Does, does that mean, does that mean air in this case, s situation, too? Well, their legend says process. I, and I couldn't tell if that was a, just a typo or a broken or a line but or a There's nothing line. else there that even looks close to that, so it must okay. be. Okay. Or, except for. But low you're right. Pressure, we're we're but used to seeing a double dash as meaning an automatic line. Right. Not so here. They have made up their own legend. And that's that. And Boom. That's that. Okay. That's why I get paid the big bucks, I guess, yeah. to interpret other people's Figure bizarre out. symbols. Mistakes. Okay. <laughs> and mistakes. And mistakes. Yes. Not in this, but in the other diagram, I saw those mistakes. Very good work, gentlemen.